I would say sentiment right now is fairly positive. Uh, it's been a choppy year, and as you point out, there's been a lot of different news flows in different areas. Uh, at China weakening more recently, uh, Europe has been sort of a constant mess throughout the year where the solution seems fixed again and broken again and fixed again. Uh, so I think at different times, investors have been confused, but actually on balance, most of the developed market equity indices are up for the year. So it's come together as being fairly positive sentiment on balance. Uh, I would say looking forward, it's, um, there are still risks. Uh, I don't think the risks of European recession or pullback in the U.S. or uh, the structural changes happening in China, all those things are still ongoing. So I don't think investors should take the recent strong performance as something that's permanent or necessarily sustainable. Uh, if we'd spoken, say, a year ago, we were much more optimistic. Uh, particularly on most of the developed markets, and that has played out pretty well. And now at this point, I would say the upside is probably a bit more limited. I would say right now they're, they're fairly, well, they're out of favor. Mm -hmm. um, the, so if we look at just some of the bigger players, like Australia, but really global players like a BHP mm -hmm. or a Rio Tinto, Bali, uh, those companies have sold off quite a bit mm -hmm. and their fate is just very much determined by the future of China which like I was saying mm -hmm. before is very uncertain right now mm -hmm. so they're out of favor but that that's actually more it kind of plays into how we view markets and how we do valuation is we're we're very willing to take contrarian views uh, so our take is that there are some economic risks and that China slowing is definitely a risk, Europe, Europe slowing is definitely a risk, but that's priced in, is our take. It's priced in and more. So we actually think that uh, some of the major players like BHP and Rio uh, are offering good value right now. Uh, that's not necessarily the case across commodities. So part of our process is finding high quality companies. So the companies with assets in the ground that they can get out more cheaply than anyone else. Those are the companies where, almost regardless of the economic situation, they're going to do fairly well. Consumer is an interesting one because it's... Uh, so I think part of it depends on which part of consumer we're talking about. Uh, consumer defensives have done very well in most markets because they are defensive. So in an uncertain, kind of risky environment, people will gravitate toward the defensive investments. Mm -hmm. uh, consumer defensives also tend to offer uh, pretty good dividend yields, so income. And in many markets around the world where you're dealing with much lower interest rates than you've had in the past, people are really clamoring for that income. Uh, consumer defensives are a good place to be for that. So they've done extremely well. Uh, I suppose it depends on the market, but overall, from what we've seen, there's probably not a huge amount of upside left in consumer defensives. Uh, they've basically just had a very good run. Mm. Uh, consumer discretionary is a little tougher uh, because of some of the economic uncertainty in, uh, in Europe with their different fiscal pressures and high unemployment, and weak housing prices and all the things adding up there. Consumer discretionary has not done very well. So there's probably a little more value to be had there, but it's definitely more of a high risk, maybe high reward uh, situation.